Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode here on the Rest of Saga Workshop. And we're back at the Toylander one. Lots of work going on in this particular episode. We have finally got paint sourced for the bonnet. After a long time with COVID and social distancing and all the various barriers that the pandemic has put up, and I've finally got the correct paint mixed and aerosols ordered. I've got lacquer and I've got primer. So bonnet is going to get painted in this episode and installed. I've also got steel for the bumper, so I'm going to make the front bumper and I've also got steel to make the grab handle. So lots of welding, fabrication and painting to be done in this episode. Big steps forward and really get the front end of the Toylander largely finished. So without any further ado, let's get stuck into the Toylander 1. Okay, so starting off, I have the bonnet back out. Can't tell you how excited I am to get some paint on this and it's obviously upside down. Um, you can maybe just make out there in the image. I have already wiped this down with white spirit just to remove any grease that may have landed on it in storage. It's amazing what lands on these things and silicon is the worst because you get that real wee fisheye effect. Obviously underneath the bonnet doesn't matter just as much but I'm really really keen to get as good a finish in this as I possibly can. So I'm going to leave that a minute just to let the white spirit to flash off. Then I'm going to rattle my spray can and get the first coat of colour on underneath reason I'm doing underneath as well, first of all, is so that it can sit up the correct way for when I'm doing the top and I'm not going to be scared of marking a fresh paint job. Um, so good to get the practice in, I haven't painted anything in a little while. So get the practice in here, flip it over, mask off the hinges, do the colour coat lacquer and then job done and get it back on the Toylander. So exciting times here back at the Toylander one. Okay, so having done a quick jump on, it's all painted underneath and I've obviously turned it over. So having lacquered underneath, and previously you may remember I had painted this hinges silver already um, in preparation for painting, but then I ran out of the cream. Then coronavirus happened and I wasn't able to get any paint mixed. So I've taped up the hinges to keep the silver protected and covered. Then I'm going to do all the cream limestone and then take the masking off and then lacquer it all as one therefore it should be nicely sealed um, I have degreased this multiple times with white spirits I've used baby wipes on it as well and then white spirit it again I wiped all the debris off and it's been sanded so really hoping for a top-notch paint finish on this so let's get started to that and see how we get on so just a quick look at this in progress um, two coats of the limestone are on and it seems to be reasonably good coverage although I think it is going to require a couple more coats just to take the sort of striping out there. Um, so a couple more sort of vertical coats and then I'll probably do a couple of horizontal coats just to make sure it's absolutely 100% covered. Um, it seems to be doing quite well here. It's quite nice and warm today, although it is quite humid and we just had a shower of rain. So hopefully it won't affect the paint coverage too much. Looking good. Plenty of colour now has gone onto the bonnet and I think I think you'll agree that most of the stripes have gone out of it. I can't see any grey primer coming through and there's quite a nice consistent cover there. Um, you'll also notice I've taken the masking tape off the hinges and I'm glad to say that they've covered up really well. There's no cream on the silver so I think it's time for some lacquer, don't you? So nice lacquer over the top really finish it off, give it a bit of shine and a bit of protection and maybe a bit of depth to the paint. And I'm sure you'll agree, the paint match has been really, really good. I was a little bit concerned getting the paint from a different manufacturer, but I think with the new RAL codes, it's all quite standardized and that's what they reassured me about. So time will tell whenever this is right up against the wings, but I think that's pretty top notch looking. And here we go, ta-da! Nearly feel like getting a bit of a drum roll put into the video here, but here we have it. A fully painted bonnet back on the Toylander. The hinges are screwed in, nice and secure. I think you'll agree the paint match is pretty good. Paint surface isn't perfect, this, but this was done in an aerosol in my back garden at the end of the day. And I'm really delighted. Side on, looks like a proper miniature Land Rover now. Absolutely brilliant. I've set the seat back in here. And you'll notice a lot of other stuff, mainly because I've tried to create a bit of space. Um, I did a, was given a lot of stuff um, from the friend, family really, of a friend of mine who passed away a number of years ago. And I've been given a lot of stuff, including a lot of Skelextrix, framed pictures, a remote control car, um, and lots of sort of vintage 
car models as well, um, which are restored in these boxes. So um, plenty to sort through in the weeks to come and I'll probably make some videos as to what I'm going to be doing with the collection because as you can see I don't have a lot of wall space. I've moved some number plates here and rejig my models but I need a wall space here and a wall space here but some of it will go into storage. But anyway, back to the Toylander. It's just giving you a little bit of an update. Now, slight problem. This bar here is filing on these little brackets which hold the headlights, it just files at the top. So what I'm gonna to have to do is try and cut some slots for each of those respective brackets, just to allow this for a bit of clearance. Very annoying, because I thought it was just gonna be able to screw it on and that'll be the front end largely finished. Um, but just a little challenge thrown up for me, um, some adjustment. Um, you may have noticed previous video, some steel has arrived. This is the steel for the bumper and mighty thick it is too, and it's pretty blooming heavy. So plenty of that. Um, so that's for the front of the bumper. These are like brackets. That's just normal angle iron that uh, those sort of sit in underneath the floor to provide a bit of support for the bumper as it's so heavy and it'll sit on the dumb iron so those two sit underneath and give it a bit of lift so the whole weight of that steel bumper is not on four screws. And then this piece of metal tubing here is for the grab handle. So it is what I've been talking about in previous episodes. It runs across the front of the dashboard um, and just finishes it off. The Series 1 Land Rovers had it full width, the Series 2 didn't, and then the Series 3 didn't, so but, so it's quite a, a Series 1 specific item, so it's going to be silver as well. So really what I need to do is cut the tubing to length, and then make the little end brackets that are going to hold on to the bulkhead, and then weld them together. So back to cutting, shaping, welding, things I love. Okay, so this is the first bit of the piece of today's fabrication. And this is the tube cut to length and I'm trying to video and hold this in one hand and I hope you can give some sort of idea that just sits in there um, above the instrument panel and in between the little uh, windscreen catches and that's where that's going to sit. Just need to make the brackets welded up and paint it. So first step of that. Okie doke, jumping forward quite significant actually for reasons I'm going to explain now. This is the Toylander bumper, and I have made this out of box section. It's 50mm by 25mm steel. Um, and what I have done is I cut this little curve out, left this flat long, so it's sat up here, and then I managed to bend it over so you get this nice curve at both ends. I think that you'll agree it looks pretty smart. And it's meant to mimic the sort of the full-sized Land Rover, so you get this curve and the long section. So this is the full width of the Toylander um, with nice curved ends. Now I still need to weld the support brackets which will go on perpendicular and I think I might weld these little joining plates on here um, as they go on to these um, just to create a nicer join between the wood and the steel which is going to run across here. Now the reason there's a bit of a jump in continuity in this video is when I started cutting this piece of metal I actually gave my thumb a really nasty injury with the angle grinder, I caught my thumb um, and I do a job where really to be honest if I didn't have the use of my thumb I would be out of work. Um, so I really have to be quite cautious so I had to arrange my dad to come up hold the steel for me and we did it nice and carefully between the two of us um, just so I wasn't trying to hold steel and cut with one hand which yes my own stupidity, my, my fault, lesson learned, won't be doing that again. So. Now I'm going to get the welder out. I'm going to weld up here, along here, on the underside, on both ends. That'll be the front bit of the bumper done. And then I did get the support brackets done without losing any fingers. So those will be welded on here. And I've rounded off the corners as per the instructions. So a bit of welding to be done here. And then I'm going to place it roughly on the Toylander and see how we go. I've covered up the front of the Toylander here with an old tile just to make sure there's no welding sparks go anywhere. And there's nothing else in the vicinity that's particularly flammable or I'm concerned about. I know there's a glass cabinet here, but I'm sort of going to be standing between it and that. So let's get on with that. So before I go any further, this is my welding. Um, of course, I'm showing the nice tidy side. The other end maybe just isn't so pretty, but came in okay. I am going to grind these nice and flat um, and tidy the whole thing up just to make it look a bit more presentable. And I've moved on now to clamping up the brackets. So these sort of, they have to imagine this bumper is upside down now. So these brackets are going to be in 
and screw into the bottom of the floor of the toy lander because um, this is quite a weighty piece of steel and uh, screw it onto those little metal plates I don't really think or those wooden supports wouldn't really cut the mustard so heavy bumper nice steel support screw them into the floor two of these need to be welded on the edges have been rounded previously although I think those will need tidy a little bit with the grinder so we dab of weld on both sides and that should keep it nice and strong and there we have it some pre ground down weld images here um, so these two support brackets are now welded on and started playing a bit with the weld settings because um, this is lovely thick steel and to be honest I'm quite used to welding the thin cheese of Morris Miners and the like um, but I think it overcooked the goose a little bit on this one and didn't quite have enough gas on this one um, but that's okay I mean at the end of the day it's not a structure of a classic car still quite pleased with this it's a nice smooth weld um, just needs to grind down now really um, but before I do that I'm going to hold it up on the toy lander and see if it all lines up and if there's any adjustment needs to be made I'll do that I'm also going to weld these little plates on that I was talking about but I need to see how that's all going to work in don't want to start cutting into it again because it did take a bit of effort and almost sacrificed a thumb for this bumper so just take it one step at a time and do it right Ta-da! Been over it with the grinder, mostly annoying the neighbours. Um, but I have ground down those welds all around. Um, that's having had obviously those two supporting brackets welded on, on three sides anyway. I've ground down the welds there and it's looking pretty swish. The LED lights are flashing there in the background. Um, the top's really the most important because that's the bit you're going to see plus these corners. And I'll just dress them a little bit with a file as well to make sure they're okay. The last bit is to put the little starter handle escutcheon, I think it's called. And it just sits there slightly off center and lines up with the where the engine starter really would be. Not center, but just slightly off center. I'll show you what I mean there. If you can just see that little hole underneath the number plate, that's what I mean. So that's what's next. And here we have the starter handle escutcheon. Um, just cut out from the template. This is the template, this is the steel, used the angle grinder this time, which is significantly faster than using the hacksaw, which I have been. So I've marked, as you can see there, one, two, three, four, five little holes, and I'm just going to weld, or drill them through and make sure I have these little holes here. And then I'm going to weld this onto the bumper, and that's the bumper ready to get painted, which is really pretty cool. And there we have it, one fully completed Toylander 1 bumper that just needs painted. So. I really dressed these over with the angle grinder, then went over the corners with the file, and then I've sanded them as well. So yes, there are a few little marks, but if you look at the bumper of my own, there's visible welds. And I know that's not the original bumper, but um, always good to compare. So that's that side, that's the little escutcheon plate, welded on, uh, grinded those down, filed them and sanded them. So yes, there's a few little marks there. Didn't know whether to leave those as spot weld looking things, but I've just done them anyway. The inside of this will be left dark grey and the rest will be painted silver to get the illusion of the hole going all the way through to the starter dog of the engine. Ground those flat as well, although I don't think you'll see them. And then right up in this corner here, I've gone over this again. And I think this is going to look absolutely top notch when it's all primed and painted. So the next thing I'm really going to do is put a sheet down in the ground, go over it with some um, cleaner, probably white spirit is my usual flavour because it's nice and cheap. And then get some acid etch primer because despite it being a wet day to start with, it turned into quite nice. So might as well crack on. <laughs> Oops. And get this fitted. Slightly awkward angle here to take the video, but there we have it. A finished bumper. And I have just clamped it in place there with those little G clamps that you've seen featured throughout this build process. Um, I think it really works very well and it's turned out very smart in the silver. Um, and there's barely a mark to be seen from the, the grinding and cutting and welding and so on. So very pleased with that. Just going to screw this up through the bottom here. Probably bolt it rather than screw it. And then cut the notches in this little reinforcement piece. And then I get the front panel on. And then the so-called face of the toy lander will be complete. The other thing I'm just going to touch in is this little recess here. I'm going to try and do it in a similar colour to this. So And these two do pretty much line up. Um, just so you get the impression of the hole going through to the starter dog of the engine. Um, 
not the greatest shot, but I'm sure you can appreciate it. it looks pretty good. And there we have it. That is the front end of the Toylander finished. I've put the grill on just with two split pins there to hold it in place so you can see what it's going to be like. So the bumper is on, the front cross member finishing panel is on. I really just need to paint this little infill patch here and that is me done. I'm balanced underneath the workbench here to make this. I've got a nice even panel gap the whole way around so I'm quite pleased about that. So it really has come on leaps and bounds so I'm going to turn it around and get some photos and then start thinking of where else I'm going to go with this. Still need to make that grab handle I was talking about not so long ago but absolutely delighted as to how this has turned out. Really really pleased. Oh well never mind what I said I'm just going to crack on and get this grab handle made in this video um, as I'm spacing out the videos production at the minute um, I feel like I have to make it work more worth your while so I'm going to get on make this grab handle. So these are the two little brackets marked out on my steel. And I'm just going to cut them off here with the angle grinder and then get them welded on to the tube I cut back at the start of the video. And then it'll just be a case of shaping them, getting the welds ground down and getting it all painted. Alright, and as promised, a little bit of angle grinding and filing later, I have two brackets cut out from the steel. I think from memory it's 1.5mm, it might just be one, but... Um, or it could be two, who knows, can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but this is the steel bar and that is just going to get welded onto there. Um, but first I need to make a little fold in this corner because that's how it's going to get attached onto the bulkhead of the Toylander. And even before that I need to drill the two holes that are going to allow it to be held. So drill four holes and fold and then weld and that will be that done ready to be cleaned and then painted. And here we are with two handed brackets and I had to remember that they were handed otherwise it would look pretty stupid. So um, just to weld the tube on really and that is the fabrication part done. Um, this one's slightly more rough just with a few more hammer marks. I thought I would be able just to bend it by hand but the steel is slightly thicker than I'm able to do with out a folder so just use the hammer. Um, and once it's on, I'll probably just use a wee grinder and dress those down and you'll never see it once the paint's on and all the various other bits and pieces. This is my welding setup. Um, I forgot I had these little magnetic clamps, but it provides a nice 90 degree angle. It's just going to sit in there. This side doesn't matter really how it sits, but as long as it matches the other side. Um, so I'll get this one right. I'm just going to stick a little few little tacks of weld around there to hold that in place take the magnet off and do a nice tidy weld. So a few tacks just to hold in place, first of all. So that's one end welded on with moderate success. Took me a little while to get the settings and the welder right, but it does look tidy underneath, which is a little bit annoying because the top is what you're going to see. Um, but now I have this side set up, so hopefully the settings will be a bit better. Let's get on and get this finished. I have to say I'm really quite pleased with this for an afternoon's work. A finished grab handle. Yes, probably not the most complex of fabrications, but still, nonetheless. Tidied up all the joins with the hand file and then I've gone over it with some sandpaper just to take out the witness marks from where it was held in the vise. So all the surfaces really that Junior's going to be touching are now nice and smooth. Um, and I'll just double check all that just before I start painting. Actually, there's maybe a little rough bit there. So that's where we're at right now. Just time to get that painted and then reattach, but the, the painted item and the reattachment will probably be in the next episode, as I'm sure you'll agree this episode's probably gone on long enough, but giving you value for money. Right, so let's wrap this video up and talk about what's happening next. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I'm sure you'll agree that that was worth the wait, and it's been quite a while since the last Toylander update. There's been plenty going on in this episode, and there's plenty more coming in the weeks to come. I really hope you enjoyed it, so please hit the like button down below, fire me a comment, I reply to them all. Be it positive comments, suggestions, criticism, if it's constructive, I really do appreciate them. Also hit the subscribe button, that's the best way to keep in touch with me. I'm on across all the social media channels, I have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and I'm quite active on most of them. Um, I'd like to thank MH Aquatics also for being my Patreon supporter, and if you'd like to support me, please find me over on that. So I Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you again next week. Cheerio!